Okay, let's look at the reverse direction of what we've been doing. So, so far I've been giving you an equation of a line and asking you to graph it. Uh, but here what we're going to do is we're going to be given the graph and then I'm asking you to write the equation of the line. So let's just do a quick review here. We have y equals mx plus b. That is our slope intercept form. Again, slang, most people just call it y equals mx plus b, but this is its formal name, slope intercept, because we're given the slope and the y intercept. The second one we talked about was ax plus by equals c. That's the standard form or general form. Um, and again, the a, b, and c don't easily translate into anything that you see on the graph, uh, but it is nice if we're given this, it's pretty easy to graph that. Uh, and then the third one was y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And this was called point slope. And again, it's because we're given the slope and then we know the x and y coordinate of some random point, which is generally not the y-intercept. So if you remember from a previous video, I said that when we are writing an equation of a line, we almost never write it in this form as we're starting out. A lot of times they'll ask you to translate it in standard form, but never start out with that. Uh, again, because of its lack of uh, information in terms of what's given in here. We can very easily read the slope and the y-intercept. We can very easily read the slope and the coordinates of an ordered pair that's on the line, but here we can't really just look at that and read anything from it. So we're going to, um, we would always choose to write it in one of these two forms, y equals mx plus b or point slope. Now, if you look at the sheet, which you should have in front of you at this point, um, they've got this, uh, the y-intercept marked in each case, which should be a big uh, clue right there that you want to use the uh, slope intercept form. So I'm going to do that for the first two and then I want to show you how you would use the point slope form and talk about when you would actually choose to use that. Uh, most time we would choose to use the y equals mx plus b form. All right so remember that it's y equals mx plus b and the two things that make up the line are the slope and the y-intercept. So I'm going to leave blanks for them and we're going to fill them in. We're going to look at the graph and figure out what they are. So let's start with the y-intercept and that is pretty easy to read as being at negative one. And then we have to figure out what the slope is. And again, I'm going to remind you that you should always just kind of look at your line to, to just kind of read it. I'm doing air quotes around that read, because if you remember, we talked about you read a line as you go from left to right, just like you read a book. So start from the left, go to the right and imagine yourself on that line. If you're up here on the line and you're going from left to right, you're going down. So the slope of this line is going to be negative. Sometimes I'll just put that right there so that if I mess up on you know, what my rise or my run is, I always remember that it should be negative uh, in the end. All right, so I have this as my starting point, and then I need to find another point on here that has integer coordinates, all right? So it's not that one right there. That one just misses it. The line crosses a little bit to the left of that uh, intersection of the line x equals two and y equals negative two. Same thing here, this one really misses it. This one misses it, it's just a little bit to the right, but this one looks like it's right on the money here. All right, so I'm gonna use that as my second point. You might have also noticed this point up here, which looks like a really good hit, so you could use that one too if you wanted to. But I'm gonna use this, um, and I'm gonna go from my y-intercept. So my rise is going to be how much I have to go up or down. I have to go down to get to this point, so I have to go down one, two, three, four. So I'm gonna rise negative four. I've already put that negative there, so I'm just gonna put negative, and then my run is one, two, three. All right, so I'm gonna just clean this up right here because we would never write this plus a negative one. We would write it as y equals negative four thirds x minus one and that would be the equation. All right, so that's all that I'm looking for right there is for you to just be able to tell me that this line is y equals negative four thirds x minus one. Okay, let's look at number two. Again, y equals mx plus b. I'm looking for you to tell me what the slope is and what the y-intercept is. All right, so again, I usually start with a y-intercept, that's pretty easy, uh, and that is three in this case. And then we have to find some other point that we can go through um, besides the y-intercept because we need to find the rise and the run. So the rise 
from here to what, the run from here to what. So I notice that this point right here looks like it has integer coordinates. So to go from here up to here, I have to rise one and I have to run three. And again, if I read the line, I see as I start from the left and go to the right, it's increasing, so it should be a positive slope. I got a positive number. All right, so there's no cleaning up to do on this one. It's just one third x plus three. Okay, you could do the rest of them all that way, and I encourage you to do, I'm gonna do number four, but you're, you can do three, five, six, seven, and eight all that way. But I wanna show you a case where you would want to use this, uh, the point slope form. So let's say, for example, that instead of the y-intercept being here at negative three, it crossed, the line crossed somewhere between negative two and negative three, and you weren't exactly sure what the y-intercept was. Um, but you could tell that there were other points somewhere on the graph that had integer coordinates. So uh, there's only one other one, so this isn't necessarily a great example to do it on. Um, let's see, maybe, actually, let's do this one right here, number six. I can see that it has integer coordinates right here, and I can see that it has integer coordinates here, but let's pretend it didn't have integer coordinates on the y-intercept, that it was somewhere between positive two and positive three. So since I have two non-y-intercept points, I would choose the point slope form, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. All right. So we need two things. We need the slope and we need the coordinates of a point on the line. All right, so I'm going to choose this one for my point, negative 4, negative 3. All right, and then I need to figure out what the slope is between these two points. Again, I'm pretending that this one doesn't have integer coordinates so that I have to use these two. Okay, so to get from here to here, first of all, notice that it's gonna be a positive slope. I have to rise three and I have to run two. So my slope is gonna be positive three over two, rise three, run two. And then I'm gonna fill in y minus, now I've chosen this ordered pair, whoops, that should be negative three. Uh, y minus a negative three, whoops, I don't need two parentheses there, equals three halves x minus a negative four. Okay. So technically, you're done. You've written an equation of the line that passes through these two points, all right? But I'm gonna clean it up. And I just wanna point out that I chose negative four, negative three. You could have chosen negative two, zero, in which case your equation would not look the same as mine. Yours would look like y minus zero equals three halves x minus a negative two. So just looking at it, you might say, oh gosh, we, I got the wrong answer. That's not the same one that you got here. Um, so what we do to just kind of standardize this to make sure that everybody gets the same appearing equation, even though these are both correct, uh, we wanna know, just have a single answer that we can check it with. Usually what we do is we take this one and we transfer it from this form into our slope intercept form, or y equals mx plus b. Now before that we do that, I just wanna point out some differences here so you know the direction that we're headed with this. So I want to get it to this form. I have it in this form. So in order to figure out what we have to do to get it from here to here, let's point out some major differences between these two, all right? So one thing is point slope form has parentheses and y equals mx plus b form or slope intercept form does not. So we need to get rid of the parentheses here to make it look more like this. All right, that's one thing that we need to do. Second thing that we notice is that here y is alone and here y is not alone. It has, it's the y coordinate is being either added or subtracted to it. So we need to get rid of that so that y ends up being by itself. All right, so get rid of the parentheses and move this y1 over to the other side. Those are the two things that we have to do that will make it look like this. All right, so let's do that. So I'm gonna um, first distribute the three halves through. So we've got y, and I'm gonna write this minus negative three as plus three equals, so three halves times x. And then this is gonna be, uh, this will actually be x plus four. Sorry, I should have done that first. Um, I'm gonna distribute the three halves to the four. So this will be positive because we did minus a negative is positive. And then three halves times four, the two and the four will cancel. This will give us a six. Okay, so I just cleaned it up a little bit and then distributed the three halves. And now I'm gonna subtract the three from both sides. 
So I end up with y equals 3 halves x plus 3. Right. Now, that, even if I did it this way, I would still get the same answer. Let's clean it up. y minus 0 is just y. And then this is 3 halves times x plus 2. And then if I distribute that 3, the 2's will cancel. I get y equals 3 halves x plus 3. Right, so when we when we get it into that y equals mx plus b form, they'll both look the same. Uh, second, because we were just pretending that this didn't have a y coordinate that was an integer, um, we can actually check to make sure that we would get the same thing if we did it in y equals mx plus b form just to begin with. So here this says that the y-intercept is 3, yes it is, and that the slope is 3 halves, so rise 3, run 2. Or you could say rise negative 3, run negative 2, that would also give us 3 halves. All right, so again, you would only use this method if your y-intercept was not did not have an integer coordinate, and but you could find two others somewhere that did. All right, but on these sheets, they're just definitely not going to do that to you. But this is just when you would use that. All right, so for three, four, five, seven, and eight, I want you to write the equation, but just do it in the slope-intercept form. You don't have to try this other form like I did. Okay, good luck.